Uh, greetings from Sydney, Australia. Uh, welcome to the Office of the Australian Olympic Committee. I'm joined with uh, Georgia Thompson, who manages the AOC's uh, social media, and Tony Hullius, who manages sport at Sydney Olympic Park. I'm James Edwards. I look after community engagement and Olympian services at, at the AOC. Thank you to uh, Olympic Cities for the invitation to join this uh, 2020 virtual summit. The, uh, the story of Sydney 2000, of course, has very many real uh, legacies. Um, there were so many uh, people and institutions invested in the games themselves. It was, um, apart from the, uh, the venues, and we're gonna hear from Tony Hullius in a minute, with Sydney Olympic Park, um, it was the entire Australian sports system. Um, it's the Institutes of Sports, it's our national federations and it's athletes. Um, all of those legacies continue. Um, so many things were learnt out of Sydney and, and the funding of Sydney 2000 Australia was very much appreciated. Um, in approaching this um, anniversary though, the AOC uh, was certainly the st has the stewardship of the Olympics in Australia, but we regard the Olympics as um, they're for all, the Olympic Games are for all, the Olympic spirit's for all, and these ideas of the Olympic spirit are very universal. So we wanted to be very inclusive in how we approach the milestone. But the themes that we wanted to um, include were certainly Sydney 2000 were the athletes games. So we wanted to include athletes at the front of our, our campaign. We were keen to celebrate uh, volunteerism, which was a massive part of, of, of Sydney 2000. Um, one really important part was um, the games themselves highlighted Australia's relationship with its Indigenous heritage uh, and First Nations people. So um, there were a few very key moments in the Sydney 2000 Games. In particular, um, it started off with, with the great Nova Paris uh, running the Olympic flame out at Uluru, the centre of Australia, for the torch relay. It kind of culminated um, at the Games themselves when Cathy Freeman lit the Olympic cauldron and then a couple of weeks later won the 400 metres. Um, that particular time and that particular event has encapsulated or it's the imagination of, of athletes and Australians. It's a moment in time that we wanted to bring to the fore and, and really celebrate that. Also very important with the Paralympic movement to bring out as many stories as possible. Firstly to, to Tony Hullius. Tony, you run the, the sport program at Sydney Olympic Park. The park itself as most of the venues from Sydney 2000. We know the other venues are used often. We know um, the patronage of the park is, has been on the rise since 2000. So would you mind sharing with us a few of the, the key themes and, and legacies out of 2000? Thanks, James. Look, uh, our legacy journey begins in the early hours of the 24th of September, 1993, with the late uh, Juan Antonio Samaranch, the president of the IOC, announcing, and the winner is Sydney, Australia. This announcement drew us like moths to a flame. It is, it is the moment that inspired me and our sporting nation uh, towards this Olympic journey. The 20, 20th anniversary of the Games um, is, a, is a significant moment for Sydney Olympic Park and, and uh, today I'm going to sort of cover off on two key legacy areas of environment and sport. Firstly, our environmental legacy is of note. In 1993, our journey, as I said, commenced and announced, this announcement triggered the largest remediation project Australia had seen, transforming a polluted, toxic and damaged land into the Green Games legacy. The Green Games was the first of its kind, providing a unique opportunity to heal the land and create a rich 430 hectare parkland. A, nat a natural environment that includes over 250 native animal species, over 400 native plant species and three endangered ecological communities. We led the world in energy and recycling, creating Newington, the world's largest solar suburb. suburb. We developed a world-leading recycled water plant. This has reduced our water consumption by 90% over the past 20 years and future-proof Sydney Olympic Park from drought. Building on our Green Games environment credentials, we have recently been recognised as world leading in sustainability, with the park receiving six star green star rating by Green Building Council of Australia. Sydney Olympic Park is a groundbreaking example of the power of sustainable design 
and has now been further developed as Sydney's central city. A healthy lifestyle environment with increased residential and commercial and a future new stadia precinct with metro fast train connections. Since the Games, there's been a further $3.6 billion of private sector investment in Sydney Olympic Park. Our sports legacy. We delivered a dream games. The creation of the, of the most diverse sporting precinct in Australia has provided a legacy for Sydney Olympic Park to continue to host world-class events. Pre-COVID, we hosted 5,000 events annually, comprising sport, business and entertainment events. Our venue and precinct legacy is contributing over $1 billion of economic activity annually. 20 years on, we have upgraded and built on our venue legacy by collaborating with the sports sector and government to secure further investments in, in sports venues from Mountain Christ, BMX, skateboarding, AFL, rugby league, tennis and cricket. The park's evolution into a sporting hub which is home to 60 sporting organisations and 17 home teams is inspiring the next generation of sports participants and contributing to reducing childhood obesity levels. Last year we had 1.8 million people attending major sporting events which was surpassed by the number of people playing sport at 2.6 million. I believe this is our most significant sports legacy where our top level athletes are inspiring our next generation to participate in sport. Our Olympic Stadium has been busy hosting the NRL Grand Final and coming up we're hosting the Bledisloe Cup and the New South Wales State of Origin Series, New South Wales versus Queensland. We're also looking forward to next year and with the 2021 ATP Cup tennis coming along, the 2021 Australian Athletics uh, and Tokyo Olympic Trials, the 2022 FIBA Women's World Cup and the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. We hope to see you soon to experience our wonderful games legacy and some new sporting memories at Sydney Olympic Park. Thank you. We are very proud of, of Sydney Olympic Park. It's, it's the home of the Olympics in Australia and um, a lot of great lessons learnt uh, in, in running the games and, and 20 years on. So yep. thank you very much. You. Of course at Sydney Olympic Park um, we were able to run uh, one event. Uh, <laughs> We were planning many events pre-COVID, but we did get one event underway um, next to the cauldron. So the Olympic cauldron was taken from the Olympic Stadium and placed at Olympic Park, and it's still plumbed with gas. So we were very fortunate that on the 20th anniversary, we could light up the cauldron uh, with athletes there, volunteers, and a lot of Australia's media. It was, it was a fantastic media event. At the same time, we brought, we brought in many of the athletes and the the workforce who guided and, and ran the Sydney Olympic Games. Um, many dignitaries and, and uh, fantastic Australians who had now have that experience. So it was a terrific day. Um, but of course, uh, Georgia, it was nigh on impossible to fly athletes around the country at the time. Um, can you uh, share with the conference, I guess, how we, um, how we pivoted to a digital and media campaign? Absolutely, thanks James. So, as you mentioned, in an ideal world, we would have had a lot of physical events, um, but due to the current climate, we really needed to take it online. The first example we had of this was at the event at Sydney Olympic Park, where unfortunately, Kathy Freeman couldn't be there to relight the cauldron like she did in Sydney. So instead, she appeared via video screen from her home in Melbourne, and she introduced two young up and coming athletes to relight the torch on her behalf, a, a passing of the baton on to the next generation, which was fantastic. From a digital point of view on olympics.com.au, our Sydney 2000 celebration really took, uh, it was in two components. The first was very much uh, a reflective component to relive all of the highlights of the Sydney 2000 games, but with added reflection, analysis, and emotive storytelling that we have now with 20 years of hindsight. So this included day-by-day -day recollections of the game, really in-depth features with prominent 2000 team members like your Ian Thorpes and your Kathy Freeman. Um, also some of the heartbreaking stories of the games like race walker Jane Saville who was disqualified walking into the Olympic Stadium with a guaranteed gold medal. We were able to tell these stories in a really in-depth format on our website where these athletes could share 
the impact Sydney had on them, but also how their life has progressed 20 years later. We partnered with our broadcast partner, Channel 7, to repurpose videos of the games with the prominent people discussing these moments over the top across all of our website and social platforms. And we also launched a podcast with our sponsor, Swiss, which was about sharing the, the lesser known or the untold stories of the games direct from the athletes themselves. This content on our channels, which was reliving the Sydney 2000 games from the athletes' perspective, we had about 7 million impressions of this content on our channels, which already was a great feat for us. But where we really got the exposure, which we may not have had if we were not in a COVID-19 world, but the, uh, the new uh, tact, I suppose, we went on for this campaign was our My Sydney 2000 hashtag across social media. So the My Sydney 2000 campaign was all about the individuals of the games and their specific stories. So whether they were athletes who competed or celebrities who performed in the opening or closing ceremonies, or it was volunteers at the games, it was administrators, sports officials, or it was the fans who were either in Sydney or watching from home. It was their individual stories. And we encouraged everyone to share their photos and their videos and their moments across social media with the hashtag MySydney2000. This content is still continuing with the Australian Paralympic Committee at the moment celebrating their 20 years. But we're at about 75 million impressions with this MySydney2000 campaign at the moment. And that's just public impressions where we're anticipating it to be well over the 100 million mark when we consider um, private posts and, and closed Facebook groups. Yeah, so we we're quite surprised at how well this hashtag went. So the My Sydney 2000 hashtag uh, was a good idea at the time and it just took off and uh, it probably comes back to trying to be inclusive in this event and that's, it was just one way that everyone could get involved in, uh, in this celebration, no matter where they were in the world, whether it's COVID or not. So heading towards 100, 100 million impressions is, we're, we're thrilled. <laughs> um, beyond that, Georgia, um, the hashtag, um, the focus on digital and media, did you find that there were more outcomes in sort of the, the, the broader picture, which is in trying to encourage uh, participation in sport in Australia? This campaign and the celebration of Sydney 2000, it reignited the Olympic spirit in Australia at a time when perhaps it probably could have been uh, a little bit lost with the postponement of the Tokyo Olympics. But the Olympic spirit was really felt again through this campaign. By sharing these in-depth stories through the features and the podcasts, these really prominent and successful athletes were able to share their stories and lessons and advice with the benefit of 20 years hindsight that will really inspire the next generation of athletes. And one of the really positive things that came out of the My Sydney 2000 hashtag was the amount of uh, current Olympians or Tokyo 2020 hopefuls who shared their My Sydney 2000 moment and attributed that moment to igniting their Olympic dream. When they had exposure to these athletes who were achieving incredible feats, that's the moment that sparked for them that they wanted to be Olympians. And that encouraged participation for them and reliving this campaign will encourage participation for, for future athletes who get to relive those moments for the first time. The advent of the 20th anniversary certainly captured the imagination of um, media around Australia as well, particularly in New South Wales and, and, and Sydney. Our partners at the Australian Film and Sound Archive um, also got together and uh, with the IOC and managed to uh, project uh, Kathy Freeman's race, the 400 metre race, onto the sales of the Opera House. It's quite a unique building and we're very proud of that. Um, and of course, during, um, during the campaign and leading into the campaign, our broadcast partners, Channel 7, they ran two uh, extended uh, pieces, one on the opening ceremony featuring um, where are they now moments for, for, the, for all the act, uh, actors and all the performers. Um, as well as the, um, a, a long piece on Sydney 2000 athletic program and the stories behind the, behind the scenes, which was terrific. Um, the other um, piece that will be available online is um, a film uh, uh, produced by the ABC called Freeman, and it's a very different look at Cathy Freeman's race um, and, it's, um, and the impact it had on, on Indigenous relations um, in Australia. So all these things were popping up um, in media and on socials. So um, we certainly 
wanted to drive that and, and, it, and, and it turned into a, a lot of momentum. And I guess, you know, Australia, we're not alone in how to deal with COVID. Um, we've all jumped into digital and, and media as much as we can. And we're just so fortunate that at the time, um, so many wonderful memories of Sydney were able to drive that, that momentum. That's right, I think the success of this campaign can largely be attributed to uh, stakeholder engagement. So you mentioned uh, Kathy on the Opera House and Channel 7 specials. Channel 7 were also cre creating video pieces for social. We had national federations who had access to a My Sydney 2000 toolkit creating all of their own content that was specific um, to their audiences and their sport. We had our sponsors, uh, Getty Images, providing app photos from Sydney to us and to athletes. Uh, JC Deco, our outdoor furniture sponsor, putting up on billboards around the country. We had Swiss sponsoring the podcast. And I believe that by making this campaign so inclusive when we might be physically separated, that's what really contributed to the success of it because I mean, everyone felt they could be involved and play their part in, in this campaign. Yeah, even to the point where Sydney buses and Sydney trains jumped on board and put decals all over the uh, buses and trains that were running out to the park and around Sydney. In, in summary, you know, we would like to thank the IOC as well. They were instrumental in assisting us uh, pulling this uh, program together, providing the IP and very trusting in how we would have stewardship of this. Uh, celebration um, and, and they were you know they, they were very much part of this and producing uh, videos and, and as well as the Olympic Channel so that was a fantastic integration our thanks of course to the athletes and um, the Olympians and Paralympians who have been in, heavily involved in this it's their games um, they were the stars of the show and and it was so nice to catch up with them again hear their stories and and hearing them thank all the organizers of the games um, who were quite thrilled with, with the acknowledgement. Um, from here, um, Sydney continues to play a part in, in what we do at the AOC, it's in all our programs. Um, like the rest of the world, I'm sure, all our programs are now online and we're slowly, slowly trying to get back to physical events, but um, we will uh, continue with this legacy of Sydney, working with Sydney Olympic Park. Um, so many lessons and so many uh, wonderful moments and, and that idea of keeping the spirit alive, we'll continue to do that with our community programs, working with athletes and, and hopefully one day we'll be repeating this entire exercise uh, in Queensland in 2032. Yeah. Thank you all.